All right, hello world. I'm Chris Kirsten with the Savory Institute, and I'm here with two amazing ladies today. Ladies, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi everyone, my name's Abby Smith, and I am the Savory Global Network Coordinator, and I also am the hub leader that serves Northern California and Nevada. And I'm Julie Mettenberg. I'm the hub leader here in Kansas. We're serving Kansas and Missouri through the Tallgrass Network. So, you know, people watching, they probably see the Savory Institute talks about their hub network all the time. But, you know, some folks are still unclear about what that means. We get questions about that all the time. Um, you know, Abby, you are the Savory Global Coordinator for the hub network. Can you help us understand a little bit more about what that means and what that is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the the Savory Institute, our mission and our focus, we are is very focused on grasslands. So we want to uh, influence 1 billion hectares of grasslands by 2025 with holistic management, because holistic management is the way that we've seen that is the, the most uh, effective and rapid in restoring grasslands. So we are pinpoint focused on that. And I have to say, Chris, as I'm explaining this, when we were at the No-Till on the Plains conference this last week, there is this sense of urgency that we need to do something quickly. And I feel that uh, that we're in a position to do that because of our hub network. And it's just... Obviously, I really believe in it because I'm, I, I spend my life doing it. But what, but the strategy is, is that around the world we have hubs, and those are locally led, contextually relevant uh, places where people can go and learn holistic management. But the beauty of it is that these hubs are there continually. They don't move, right? They're deeply rooted in a region. They are a farm. They are a ranch. They are a community that are practicing holistic management and teaching it. And so if someone comes and takes a class and they they go back to their own farm or a piece of land and they practice it and they hit a roadblock, the hub is there to support them and help them through that. Plus there are other practitioners that they've met through the classes and the training. So it's very much about about the local region and being locally led. And then the Savory Institute supports that local hub with high quality and consistent holistic management training materials. But Savory is really the brand behind the brand. It's the hub that matters in that region. And we want them to nurture and maintain those relationships in that area with the landowners and the land managers and communities. And we, again, just support that. So very, uh, it's not a top-down approach. It's very grassroots and it, it's flexible, it's fast moving. And that's why I think that we can meet that sense of urgency that's around land restoration and regeneration better than anyone else. Right. So they're, they're locally led and managed, they're entrepreneurial, and they sound like this amazing resource to the local community. Julie, tell us a little bit about the services that hubs typically offer in their region and how that works, how they engage with those local farmers and ranchers in their area. Yeah. So um, at our core, what we're providing is just on the ground, uh, as Abby said, res um, training and education. And folks can come out here and either just see it in action and then as they engage, grow their way through it. And if they need courses, they can take courses. If they just need a little hand-holding through consulting or coaching, they can get it. We also offer contract management if there are landowners who really aren't present or not able to um, manage their own land. And then beyond that, we work with, um, you know, we're finding ourselves really working in communities uh, with entrepreneurs doing business development to try to fill other gaps in the system. Uh, as you work through holistic management, you naturally find that you're filling those gaps and finding those needs and log jams in local systems. So we're actually involved in local food system work and even getting into policy work in terms of people are saying, help us facilitate some get together meetings to solve bigger community problems with holistic management. Mm -hmm. So really as a hub, um, looking to provide all the services and the niches needed here, we're finding ourselves taking the basic framework of holistic management and applying it in these different scenarios where we're really needed. But at the core, it's on the ground with land management, day in and day out, courses, uh, consulting, coaching, um, and learning circles, you know, getting folks together to support each other. And, and really, um, the Tallgrass Network is focused here in the Midwest on really forming that network so people can help each other and, and grow those connections through all of these activities. Right. Can I add something to that, Chris? Sure, of course. 
an observation that Julie and I made when we were at Notel on the Plains this last week is that there are in our space, in this regenerative agriculture space, there are some superstars that are, you know, they're, they're promoting their messages and their methods and ways of doing things. And we think that's great. We, we love that, that that's happening there. Uh, someone in, in Ju, Ju, Julie's region is Greg Judy, who has methods and everything that are, are incorporating holistic management, but not really called that. But what we can do that's different is that we're about the service and the, the ongoing training. So it's great to go and learn those methods, but how do you know if they really apply in your context, on your place, for your family? So we can help people take those great methods and techniques that they learn from people who've really mastered those specific techniques, and then we can help them incorporate them and figure our test and figure out if that's the right time and place to be doing those things. So we provide that complete holistic context that I don't see anyone else doing. It, it seems like a pretty amazing support system for ranchers and farmers in what we all can agree is an increasingly complex world. Uh, it's the food system and agricultural systems are ch is changing across continents. Um, being entrepreneurial, they're not going to get bogged down with bureaucracy like many other organizations that are meant to be a lifeline do, but then they really get locked down in a lot of bureaucracy. So we're avoiding that. And then, you know, based with the leadership being local, it's, it's not someone coming from a faraway place, whether that's another state or another yeah. continent saying, this is how you need to change. But right. we're, we're working with them hand in hand to be successful. Would, would you guys agree? That's, that's how the program's working? A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree too. And through our training, you know, one thing we're training are champions and accredited professionals who will, who do we deploy out from our hub. So as those folks gain their knowledge and certification, they go out and help more people and that strengthens that network. Um, but it's never about some, you know, program coming down and, and parceling it out. And the other piece is those programs go away. And I think that's, we heard that too at this conference, and we all know that program that seems great for two years, and then the funding's gone. Right. And these are self-sustaining entrepreneurial hubs that meet the needs of their region, so they're able to be self-sustaining because we have value. And we're definitely seeing that we have value such that people want to engage. And so um, that self-sustaining piece gives us a long-term residence here that I think is really starting to be appreciated and understood. And, and that's going to be incredibly powerful going forward. That's awesome. So, you know, Abby, someone watching this right now might be saying to themselves, boy, I'm, I'm really ready to be involved in this in a higher level. What qualifi qualifications does it take to become a hub? Well, there's a, there's a lot of diversity in who can become a hub. So I, I want to say that first. So don't, um, it's not just, it's not just farms. It's not just ranches that can be it. We have, uh, Julie's family is a great example. Three generations, uh, we're showing how we can do successful succession and family planning. So they're an, a great example because it's contextually relevant to Kansas, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that going. So they have, you know, they're doing, um, grazing and cattle and all sorts of uh, different enterprises mixed together. That's, that's perfect for here. We also have Michigan State University, an actual university is a hub. We have uh, ranches, we have communities. So it, it, the, the business entity is not important, but there are key elements that make a successful hub or requirements. One is that the most important is that you have to have a demonstration site. So some place that's under continual holistic management that you own or can control so that you can ensure that it is under this continual holistic management. And then uh, using the grazing planning, financial planning, land planning, you have the records that show and then we can bring people or you can, as the hub leader, bring people to the place and show and, you know, quote, demonstrate what what is being done. We like to call it more of a learning site because we're always learning mm -hmm. and and we want to learn with people and, and have them experience that too. So demonstration side is one. Need to have something that you can manage holistically. Number two is that you use accredited Savory Institute training materials and you maintain your accreditation as a hub. So you and also use accredited professionals. And the reason is that we want to maintain that high quality and that consistency in what is holistic management because it it can get and has gotten in the past fragmented so that people think that they're practicing holistic management and it really isn't. It might be some offshoot of that or maybe it's a component of it, but they're not realizing the full potential and power of it because it's not 
the consistent quality. So that's the second requirement of a hub. And then the third is that it you have financial funding. We are the, something I when I talk to hub applicants and people who are curious about the program, is I I want to make clear right away is that. Uh, Savory Institute is an implementation organization and a training organization. We're not a financial organization. So we do get questions about, do you have funding for hubs? Do you have, do you, if I, I have this great work, can you help me fund it? And you, the answer is that we would love to partner with you. We can provide information, we can provide case studies, and we can provide data to help make the project proposal or the case for it. But we do not have funds ourselves. That's just not how we operate. It's not in our model. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a hub needs to come with a, a financial plan or a funding stream to get the hub off the ground. And as a hub leader who started with zero, <laughs> with nothing, and we, built, yeah, yeah, and we built that from scratch, it's actually a great way to yeah. go because you know then for sure if mm -hmm. there's demand for mm -hmm. this service in your region or not. And it can be done. So Julie and I are testament to you can yeah. you can start. So don't let that be a deterrent. Just know that it's part of what what needs to happen. And that's that is true to the entrepreneurial model. Uh, and we find that it brings the best and the brightest and the greatest ideas and the most relevant ideas and and people to the program. So let's let's stay on that line of support because really it's a relationship of support from the Savory Institute. And Correct. you know, we've talked about support from data, we've talked about support from branding. Talk about that year of onboarding that happens for a hub to get them up to speed. Maybe somebody's watching this going, you know, but I'm not a holistic management expert right now, but I really want to help. I really want to be involved. Right. Um, talk about that that first year as a hub applicant and what that looks like. Absolutely. So we go through a pretty rigorous screening process to make sure that we're aligned. And that that's really in line with holistic management in general, that you're clearly, you're very well informed when you go to make your decision and you have a decision making process. So we're, what we're looking for is alignment. So we want to make sure that that the hub is a, or the hub applicant is well aligned with Savory and with our mission, and and so that there's synergy and and good things. We just you know if it's not alignment, it's going to be clunky and and it won't be successful for anyone. So we go through that process, and then um, the hub is a candidate after they've gone through the full application process, and uh, during the applicant from going from a candidate to accredited is really a matter of completing training and getting your demonstration site well secured and documented. So the trainings that they go through are uh, first a hub leadership boot camp, we call it. Those typically happen in Zimbabwe, but we're open to other locations based on the applicants that have come in. And so that is eight to 10 days of learning how to operate a hub. So it's all about the business processes, the operations, um, fundraising, all the pieces. And it's taught by our COO, Trey Cates, and, which is an amazing opportunity mm -hmm. to spend time with him and learn how to put together a business plan specific to hubs. And it's done holistically. It's, it's really fantastic. So we do the... So it's almost an incubation program, really helping people get off right. the ground, solve problems, overcome challenges that they may not know how to with knowledge from the Sabre Institute and the hub network as a whole. Absolutely. Right. And we have, it's been going for a number of years now. So we have this wealth of knowledge within the network of experiences of, of how to really fine tune it. So the hubs coming up will have so many more resources at their disposal and in, in, in within the network. So we do the boot camp and then we do what we call a holistic management intensive. So that's another eight days of teaching hub leaders how to teach holistic management. So that's different than a hub teaching a, a farmer or rancher how to implement on the land. We're where it's like the how we teach teachers, mm -hmm. right? right? Right. So that's led by Byron Shelton, which is our program director. He's a longtime holistic management educator, field professional, and just a phenomenal teacher. So mm -hmm. Julie and I were trained by him. Yeah. So they're and, getting the most up to date holistic management thinking. And then yes. also getting taught on how to facilitate that in training other people. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that's, that's uh, when we, for the hub to maintain accreditation and our professionals to maintain their accreditation, part of that is to con take continuing education courses so that they stay present with all the latest because uh, the, the, holistic management body of knowledge continues to evolve and updates. And there, some of them are small tweaks, but they are adjustments and improvements. And, um, 
we want everyone to be teaching the latest and greatest. So Byron, uh, so Byron goes through with with that process, and it, it may be the same people that go to those two trainings, the boot camp and the intensive, or it may be different. It depends on the structure of the hub and who will be leading the trainings and who will be leading operations. So uh, those are completed for us. It was we're a small hub, so we went we did both, but. Um, Larger hubs like our hub in Texas, they split it because the people who are doing operations will not be also the trainers. So it depends on that. And then the last one that we'll be offering as the program rolls out is related to the, the Savory Land to Market program. And so hubs will be uh, verification um, entities with the ecological outcomes verification. Right. And so they need to be to know how to launch that program. And we want new hubs to be able to hit the ground running to capture that revenue opportunity that comes through that program. Mm -hmm. So as the land to market rolls out, hubs will also have hub candidates will have the opportunity to be trained in that program as well. Great. So Julie, bring us back down to the local context. You know, obviously we talk about demo site and we got, we're there at your demo site there in the background. Uh, tell us. <laughs> it's <the whole> year. <laughs> Kansas in winter. <laughs> Kansas in January. That's right. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you guys are utilizing everything Abby just said to reach out to your local community and how that's working for you guys. Mm -hmm. Well, so our leadership boot camp in Zimbabwe. Um, I mean, I draw on that every day, and I go back that far because. Um, really learning how to run the business of the hub um, with the marketing pipeline and the the pieces we learn there, we use every day um, to grow this business. And it, it cemented our understanding of the whole savory way of, of doing business. Um, but even better almost was the training with Byron because the way um, you have thought through the curriculum at the Savory Institute allows me to take it. And yes, I offer the same accreditation courses that anyone does uh, anywhere in the world with us. So we have people come in from other places to take it because they're on their route and they can take the class. But more than that, I can take the pieces of it and tailor it to certain situations here. So right now we have, um, some real uh, challenging economics in this part of the world for farming, which is probably farming worldwide all the time. But but right now, I just read that um, the average net farm income for Kansas for last year is estimated to be about four to five thousand dollars. So um, that gives you an idea with commodities doing what they're doing, um, where we're at. So I can tailor a special day of um, financial training to get someone just interested and in, into the thinking mm -hmm. and then take it further. So um, the curriculum structure has been really wonderful to meet various needs, to meet people where they are. Uh, and then as they get more, more into it and interested, they can take it as far as they want to take it. And I think that's been extremely powerful. And for our hub, I'm seeing that as really being um, a pipeline that will not only be effective to get people transitioning land, but just um, walking them through it in a kind of a safe, non-threatening way, if you will. And then our hub is looking forward to the land and market program. So um, we've, uh, we're waiting for the details on that and very excited for that training when, it, when the program rolls out. Um, it's going to be important for us here for sure. So, right. Yeah. right. It's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. To, to give people context on that, it's 2017. And so we're in our prototyping year on land to market program. But one, like Abby said, want to train all our hubs so that in 2018, everybody's ready to rock and roll. Um, so we'll have other videos that go into more depth in the land to market program. But just like Abby said, that's one of the many new things that we're rolling out to continue to create revenue streams, new revenue streams for hubs. Yeah, absolutely. Something also I noticed, this is, I'm new to Kansas. This was my first trip. So it was, it was really great to be an outsider and have this fresh perspective and all these, you know, just this new environment to observe. And we were at a, this conference, the no-till on the plains with, with farmers, obviously lots of farmers. And I work mainly with ranchers. So that was new as well. Something I, I picked up on quickly and I confirmed with Julie and then our friend James from the land Institute is that, uh, the, a lot of the conversations around, uh, cover cropping and inner inner seeding and things like that are are focused on annuals, and I know that and there's this there's this 
sense in the conference leadership and within conversations of attendees that there has to be something more like what's the next step where is this conversation going where is this practice going this community going and it's really toward perennials and i think that that hubs in the region not only for providing training and support need to be these uh, innovation incubators so mm -hmm. so it's people are looking to Julie within this community to lead that conversation and, and figure out that path forward, especially because of our emphasis on, on grasslands and perennials. And I think that uh, hubs have to be up for the challenge for things like that. And it's, it's not easy, but it's really exciting. And I think that next year with Alan speaking at that conference and, and just the way that people are ready to take that next step is really exciting. And, mm -hmm. and a hub is the perfect entity to, propel that forward. And just to put a nice bow on that, I, I come away from it feeling like we are perfectly poised for that challenge, um, which, which is exciting to see come together after several years through this process. Um, you know, to be up and running with curriculum and training and be ready for them is a really, really gratifying kind of end of a startup process and now moving into a real long haul <laughs> of running a business in this environment. So, right. So if somebody's from the outside looking in and they're wondering how big a network we're talking about in 2017, we're in January right now, Abby, tell us how many accredited hubs we have and, and you know, generally where they are. Yeah, we have 20 accredited hubs in the process. Um, so we, that means they are fully operational like Julie and my hubs. They can, they can offer courses. They are up and running. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, we have hubs in every continent except for Asia and Antarctica, I believe. So I don't ever see us going to Antarctica, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the, tur the turkey hub is actually on the Asian side. So I think we've got a, our, our foot in the door on Asia, though we have some other projects going in Asia. But we've yeah. at least got our foot in the door with a hub there as well. <laughs> Thank you for that geography lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so we have – we need more. I mean, Julie, we, part of the reason we were at No-Till is that we were wanting to recruit new hubs in this region and, mm -hmm. and other places as well. I had a good conversation with a man in, in uh, both Canada and uh, Brazil. And there's, but Julie's saying, Hey, I need some help. I want more, I want more hubs in this region. There's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have, like I was saying, we need more everywhere. Right. Uh, and our goal is to get to a hundred hubs by 2025. How many candidates currently? We have uh, around 10, 10 yeah. in the pipeline that are, that have come in. And so there's a difference between applicants and then candidates and then accredited. So they're, uh, yeah. We yeah, need so there's 10 in process and then we've got 10 coming up right behind them. So, you know, the goal is to grow by 10 a year. Um, yeah. Some years we'll probably do closer to 15. Looks like this year might be one of those is more of a stellar year that we really jump that and go a little bit higher. But yeah. I think, Julie, you bring up a good point or Abby, you know, speaking for you, that this is an intensely collaborative movement. This is not mm -hmm. a competitive movement. The hubs yeah. actually get excited as new hubs come on board because they learn from one another. They sharpen one another. They support one another. There's mm -hmm. new ideas. Um, we've got a collaboration forum behind the scenes where the hubs can actually talk to each other. We get together annually. So the hubs are all together. Um, so there's an incredible amount of support internally for a system that is to create support externally. So it's really yeah. cool. To me, that's a real strong point of difference of the mm -hmm. hub model. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And I've been reading all these things that in biomimicry and, and natural systems that are showing that nature is actually more com collaborative than it is competitive. Right, and right. I, I think that's, that has been really true as yeah. our, as our network of hubs has evolved. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that mm -hmm. as well, that we want to work together. And I also read that, uh, that as a person, we're, we're such social beings that we're really influenced by our social network. Mm. So they, I've heard something that like, or read that, that you are the average of the five people that influence you the most. Mm. So, so you want to surround yourself with people who will elevate you. Right. Totally. And that's, I think that's a big reason why the network cares so much mm. about the other people in the network is mm -hmm. because we influence each other. This is sure. our community and mm -hmm. and the savory we all represent or are supported by the savory brand and so you know i'm proud to say that this is my sister hub in kansas and and we feel like sisters actually <laughs> 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 going back to zimbabwe with you yeah. <laughs> right totally, right. totally. there's a lot of bonding mm -hmm. and within the mm -hmm. network but i think that uh, yeah we really do 
we it, the network is like nothing I've ever been part of before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Um, Julie, explain for somebody who wants to work with a hub, where can they go find where their local hub is and, and get engaged? Sure. If you're not sure, um, the savory.global network um, website is this place to start, and they're all pinpointed on a, on a map. And we've had a lot of people find us that way. So that's where I would say to start. And people often ask about the region size. So there's often one hub per region uh, in the U.S. That's a state in parts of the world where the countries are smaller. It's one per country, maybe two special circumstances or something like that. But that's typically what we're looking for. So they serve a pretty large region. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's the hub really gets to choose their region. So they they have to. The idea is that ideally a hub would service 10 million acres. Right. So that they would have to. But that's not, I mean, that's a guideline. It's not a hard and fast rule. Right. We have some hubs that are much smaller, but they have the greater co- capacity to influence much more more people. So it's, we want to influence land and people with our with hubs. And so they they need to be strategically located to do that. But they get to, they get to draw the circle on the map and say, this is what I want to serve. If there is a hub in an existing area, like say if we brought in, for example, a Nebraska hub, which would border Kansas, Julie would be the first person that we talk to about it. And then, and so the, the existing hubs are always part of the conversation when a new hub comes on board that is in their, you know, would be orbit. neighboring in, in their orbit. orbit. Right, right. right. So, and it does, you're right. They typically tend to be uh, states in the, in the United States, but sometimes we have some really, really big states right. that, that might need two hubs. So. Sure, sure. So for someone who's watching this that's that's feeling super inspired at the moment and wants to apply and dig deeper into this, what are those next steps, Abby, to, to be able to go um, and get into the application process and, and start those conversations? Absolutely. So an easy, a quick and easy way is if they just went, as Julie said, to the savory.global website and they go click on the network tab or the URL would be savory.global slash network. And then there's uh, there's more information on each of our programs, so the hub program, AP, and champions. But there's a learn more button, and they can just enter their name and email address. Probably take about two and a half seconds to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Big commitment of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, that will flow into me, and then I can connect with them, and, and we start that conversation. Um, there is also a, a for, a online form that they fill out to formally apply, but I can send them that link. Um, Yeah. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. This has been a good talk about the hubs and introduction to folks. Anything else you guys would like to add? Um, Join us. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I feel, especially in this region, and I'm talking about 10 to 12 states throughout the Midwest and Canada, um, the need is so urgent. And I feel like we had a lot of good conversations at No-Till on the Plains to really reach this out further in the farming communities in these states, which um, the urgency is real. So um, speaking for my whole center of the United States, but I know other parts of the world as well. Right. So. I do. I agree with Julie. And it's uh, it's interesting for me as an outsider to come to our, you know, the native grasslands of our country and to see how much of it is not grasslands anymore. And I think that's where this dawning mm-hmm. uh, realization of per- mm-hmm. perennials and the emphasis on it is mm-hmm. becoming so important. I think that though I have noticed that in my conversations with people around the world from South America to Serbia to other places that as the global network coordinator, the sense of urgency is not specific to Kansas. Everyone is feeling it, that we right. need to move and we need to accelerate this. And I, I want to answer that call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, We'll be talking again soon about other topics going on at the Savory Institute. So look forward to that. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Bye.